Brett, fired up for this one. The Chiefs advance in the playoffs against the Bills. A big reason for this is the big uglies up front and the Chiefs getting uh, pretty creative in their run game at a very opportune moment. Yeah, absolutely. You know, using uh, using the power of angles to their advantage to get, uh, you know, good angles and, and good matchups and, and uh, find uh, their running backs a lot of space. Yeah, definitely a lot of space in this particular game. And we'll also talk through kind of something different that they did this this game that they haven't really done much uh, this entire season. So we'll start with that one and the uh, the old pin and pull. Uh, talk us through this, Brett, and how, how it's different from outside, outside zone, which we've talked about earlier this year. Sure. So this is kind of a, a, a zone gap hybrid. I know when, when we uh, you know talked after the Cincinnati game, we talked about those are the two main families of blocking. But zone blocking, everybody, as you have, illustrated there is going to block towards the play side so to basically to their gap to the right uh that's what it would look like with outside zone but here um they they use something called a pin and pull where they're going to uh pin block with this stand up tight end there i believe that's noah gray he's going to pin that uh defensive end there uh that's in the c gap and then they're going to pull uh jawan taylor um out to block who gray would normally block which is the the d gap defender most dangerous that shows up outside of him and just real quick, Brett, what are the advantages of doing this? Just really uh, the angle of a 45 degree pin block. It, it's you know probably the easiest block to make as you don't have to get movement. Um, your, your step, you, you know, you've got that good angle where you just have to step down. And everybody in the NFL is doing it now. Even out of 11 personnel and 10 personnel, they're pinning with wide receivers. So really, you just have to step down and get beat slowly if you're going to get beat. It doesn't require movement, and you see Noah Gray do a really, really good job of it there. And so interesting in this game because we see an example here where it works for the Chiefs. So now that I've, we've explained this, now you've explained it, Brett, uh, watch here. Another example of the Chiefs doing this, and you watch the tight end on the outside, a pin, and then a tackle, pull. Right. This was the big run after the fake punt stop right here. But again, that's the same formation to the other side. Uh, out of the pistol, um, tossing it uh, so the running back can can get some width and really read that on the perimeter there. And then you got Donovan Smith uh, pulling around and just the matchups. Um, you know, you've got Do Donovan Smith pulling around for a nickel, number yeah, seven. Yeah, no, real there. quick, let's, take, let's yeah. take a second to appreciate number seven here, watching Donovan Smith come towards him. Yeah, that, that poor guy, you know, he's got <laughs> – he's given up 110 pounds. And then number 30, the corner, I mean, that's Blake Bell. He's 265 pounds, and that corner's, I don't know, maybe 205. So you're getting big people on little people. Um, and even though, you know, those guys are quicker, if those guys are going to beat those blocks, they still have to, to move around big bodies uh, to beat them. And, and you know, they, they don't like that. They don't like that picture right there coming out to them for sure. And we have to give a shout out to the Chiefs coaching staff, too, because we know the Bills have been very injured with their linebackers, um, basically had to play their base personnel with uh, with nickel and a lot of defense, defensive backs in there. So uh, that's what you get when you put two or three uh, tight ends on the field. You get big bodies against small bodies and the Chiefs took advantage. Absolutely. All right. So we'll get to the second one here. And uh, Brett, this one outside zone with a fold. So t walk us through what we're going to be seeing here and uh, I'll get the animation going. Yeah, same same principles here. You're you're using angles to your advantage. Um, you know, one of the first things that that I think is pretty common across coaching is you, you figure out how how can we get our guys good matchups and good angles up front in order to be able to run the ball. And here, you know, in a traditional outside zone, just like you had it on on the the you know the the last um, illustration, everybody's blocking their play side gap. But here, they're going to use pin and pull. Um, in a different um, part of the line. They're going to pin. Um, it, so the, the reason you want to do this here is, is that is a very hard reach block for Creed Humphrey. As good as he is, trying to reach 93 in the traditional outside zone is very difficult. So uh, this this heavy shade that he, I think he talked about, what did he tell you? Yeah, I talked to Creed after the game. He said that the Chiefs kind of scouted this, this nose tackle who's lined up almost over the top of him. Uh, what he called a heavy shade. Uh, the Chiefs basically knew the Bills played this coming in, and so this was the sort of counter they were going to do the two for this, which is basically you get Trey Smith doing this pin block, and you're able to get Creed Humphrey out in space, and something the Chiefs haven't done all that often this year. I looked it up. According to Sports Info Solutions, the Chiefs have had uh, seven uh, 
play side runs with a, a play side puller all year and had five in this game for 53 yards. So uh, this is something the Chiefs hadn't done often. But uh, Cray talked about getting his athleticism out there and loving to get on the run, and the Chiefs were able to utilize that here. So, yeah, clearly they, they had a good beat on where they were going to line up, found a tendency, and and use the angles to their advantage just like they did with the 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 other pin and pull we went through. So, you know, Trey Smith's now going to pin. Um, and then um, Humphrey is then going to be responsible for – uh, basically um, a different defender, as we'll see. It, it kind of it plays out a little bit differently than you would expect because the defensive end ends up going inside. But we'll run it and talk through it as we go through it. So we see Creed Humphrey come around here. And as you said, potentially he could have the B-gap there, but he sees uh, Juwan Taylor get the, uh, the B-gap cover there. So he continues to loop around. And once again, our poor friend number seven is about to see a, a, a fistful or a helmet full of uh, offensive linemen for the Chiefs. Yeah, yep. And now he gets a he gets a different uh, big body coming at him. Uh, but I just want to give a quick shout out to to Jawan Taylor. He knows this. This I mean, this is smart football because in regular outside zone, when that defensive end goes in, then Trey Smith is usually there to pick up that B gap, and he would go to the C gap. But he knows now that Trey Smith is pinning the A gap, so he's not going to be there to pick up any B gap penetration, which would kill the play. So he follows him in, and then Creed reads that block and knows that, hey, i got to get around and now pick up that C-gap defender who ends up being number seven who's a nickel. And so once again, uh, now that we've gone through that, let's take a look at a second play. Now you guys know what to look for on this one. So what's going to happen on this play? Watch for the center, watch for a pin and pull, and watch for the Chiefs to kind of run a different variation of outside zone here and see if you can see it. Same sort of thing. Same exact thing. In, instead of uh, you know the nickel there, you've got you got uh, twenty five there. Uh, same gap exchange um, scheme with the defense. Ninety is going to go in and play the B gap. Uh, Taylor does a good job of knowing. Hey, well the 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 um, you know right guard's pinning the A gap. He's not going to be able to help me in the B gap. I got to stick on him. And then of course Creed does a good job of reading uh, and picking up that C gap defender. Yeah, we just uh, also complimented Donovan Smith. You talked about getting beat slowly, and uh, sometimes that's okay here. He got beat slowly enough and allowed Pacheco to get by him here on the backside. Yeah, I mean, that, that's all it takes. When you're cutting off the backside of zone, just slow them down just a little bit to make sure they can't make the tackle. And you see, um, you know, Alex Gibbs, the godfather of, you know, the wide zone. Jesse, I know you've studied a lot of, lot of outside zone and um, always talked about making corners tackle. And, uh, and and here you see the corner come to fit this on the inside and just totally whiffs. There he is coming in and just totally takes a bad angle and whiffs. So, All in all, uh, Brett, what are you seeing from the Chiefs in this run game? Uh, who deserves the credit? And I guess what does the coaching staff see when they see this shade? Uh, how did they deal with this for the Bills? And, and how did that impact this particular game uh, in the playoffs? Well, again, I, I think it just gave them a great opportunity uh, to get good angles and matchups and talk about matchups, getting those big bodies out on the perimeter, uh, forcing um, their nickel personnel to play maybe how they don't want to play. Um, and just, you know, creating space for the backs by, by you know, using the, um, using the tendencies that Buffalo had to, to line up with that shade and, and be able to get a pin block on that guy, which is a lot easier than a zone block. Also show off some of the skills of some of their players on the interior line, including Creed Humphrey here, getting out in space, making these blocks. A big reason the Chiefs are able to beat the Bills, a big reason they're in the AFC Championship game now against Baltimore coming up on Sunday. Hey, real quick, just so we can kind of maybe ease the nerves a little bit of, of the Chiefs' kingdom, if you go back and look at that, uh, Nick Allegretti's reach block on that last one, um, it was, I, I believe, the pin and pull uh, to the left-hand side. Yep, right there, there he is, right there. Yep, there he is. That's uh, that's Ed Oliver there, man. That's that's a bad dude. So you see Looking him at seventy-three here for yep. the Chiefs. It, that that is not an easy block. So he's getting him reached and cut off, and you know totally keeps him out of the play. So, um, you know, I I know you had texted me. You were watching a little bit of film. It was like you know this guy would be a starter for a lot of teams. So excited to see what he can do Sunday. If if of course Tooney can't go. It'll be interesting to watch, see, interesting to see what kind of wrinkles the Chiefs throw at the Ravens in this particular matchup and what the coaches come up with, just like they did against the Bills this past week. It's going to wrap it up for the details. For Brett, this is Jesse. Be sure to tune in for another episode next week.